Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. Today we will start a new module, module number 9. So, the topic is on drought management. Some of the topics covered in this module include drought assessment and classification, drought analysis techniques and drought mitigation planning. In this module, in lecture number 35, today we will discuss about drought assessment. So, some of the topics covered in today's lecture include droughts, assessments, classification, meteorological droughts, hydrological droughts, agricultural droughts, drought vulnerability. Some of the keywords for today's lecture, droughts, assessments, meteorological drought, hydrological drought and agricultural droughts. So, as we were discussing about the watershed management, it is one of, one of the important resources is water. So, it is the mainly the management of water. So, as we discussed in the last module, if plenty of water is available, if the, if the rainfall exceeds certain limits and then uh, various drainage problems, then there is a possibility of flooding. So, that means plenty of water, excess of water is needed, water, water needed. So, that is the flooding problem. So, the drought is opposite to the flooding. So, where we do not have sufficient water for a long time, so for many months or few years time, there is no sufficient rainfall, there is no uh, sufficient water availability, either surface water or ground water. So, that way when we discuss about the watershed management, drought is one of the important aspects which we have to see all the aspects and then how we, we can reduce the vulnerability of uh, droughts as far as when we discuss about the watershed management. So, in this context today let us discuss about the drought assessments. So, as I mentioned uh, the definition of a drought is a drought is an extended period of say it is an extended period say maybe for months or years when a region notes a deficiency in its water supply whether surface or ground water. So, that way drought means say so there is no sufficient water say the surface water or ground water it is no, not only for few months, but uh, say maybe number of months or so for, for few years. So, there is no sufficient water is available either surface water or ground water. So, that way uh, we can say that uh, a, a location where watershed is say uh, amenable to drought. So, when there is no sufficient rainfall say for a uh, few seasons or few years or uh, say uh, even whenever sufficient rainfall is there, but say for 2, 3 months and then say 7, 8 months or 9 months there is no rain at all and then there is no sufficient water available. So, that way it can be short term drought or long term drought. So, this way so droughts occurs when a region receives consistently below average precipitation. So, that way we can see that when rain is not at all taking place say to a normal condition or average condition. So, for uh, say a few seasons or few years. So, that way uh, we can say that consistently below average precipitation is the condition for a watershed then we can say that that watershed is amenable to, amenable to drought. So, that way there is substantial uh, say we, when we look into look about to the drought situation. So, when we say uh, look to the drought situation in many countries or many locations we can see that there is substantial impact of droughts on the ecosystem agriculture, human being, flora and fauna. So, that way that affected region there is no sufficient water either in terms of surface water, ground water. So, that is a, a major issue. So, even a short intense drought can cause significant damage and harm the uh, local economy. So, as I mentioned the drought can be for short term or for long term. So, short term means even though there, there was rainfall say, say to certain uh, average condition but that is for a short duration, but uh, say uh, say for example, 2, 3 months of rainfall, but then uh, 9 or 10 months of there is no rainfall or there is no sufficient water is available due to various reasons. So, then we can see, see that that is so called short term uh, uh, duration. So, uh, so that way the, the total watershed will be affected in terms of uh, economy and uh, various other conditions. So, that way the availability of water is so important as far as uh, watershed management this concerns. So, we can see that this drought is a global phenomena. So, it is we can see it is not only in India or 
say in Asia, but all the countries, all the parts of the uh, world or the earth is affected by uh, drought. So, it is the drought is uh, widespread uh, and it has impacts on agriculture. Uh, so, you can see that if say uh, agriculture need sufficient uh, say moisture or water. So, that way when the availability of water is uh, not uh, say reduced, so then agriculture will be affected. And then uh, say when the agriculture uh, say, uh, say most of the, the rural economy is based upon the agriculture. So, when the agriculture is affected, then the people will be migrating from say the, the, con the considered watershed to other places in search of jobs. So, that the, the, the other impact will be migration and then uh, human settlement will be uh, say, say affected. So, if the drought is persisting for a long time say many years like what we can see in many of the African countries. Uh, like Sudan um, uh, and Chad, then you can see that the human settlement itself will be affected and then people will be migrating to uh, uh, other parts of the, the world. So, that way uh, say we can see this, this kinds of problem drought, say, so the droughts can be short term drought or long term droughts. So, long term drought is very detrimental. So, the, the total uh, the settlement or the, the, the people will be very much affected especially with the uh, long term uh, drought. So, that way when we look into droughts, so on a watershed scale, we can see that uh, say drought is, say is we, we, we say that there is drought when deficit supply of moisture. So, that way, uh, so it is a, a major natural hazards and uh, it results in a significant social, economical and environmental cost. So, the cost will not, will not only in social terms, economical terms, but also environmental uh, terms. So, that means the ecosystem will be uh, say very much affected. So, as we can see that this is a serious problem in many of the African countries you can see that this is a say world drought map. So, you can see that wherever this black area is there it is it will say the, the water scarcity is too much. So, that way we can see that uh, these are all this uh, these countries are very much uh, drought prone and long term effect is there as far as drought is concerned. And then uh, this uh, uh, blue region like India the, and other regions it is water stressed region. So, there is we can say that many locations will be having short term droughts. So, the consequences as I mentioned uh, they say long term consequ consequences like agriculture production will be affected. Then uh, wherever whichever country is where say mainly depend upon hydropower uh, production. So, when water is not available. Uh, due to the droughts. So, hydropower generation will be affected and then total economy will be affected. So, that way the consequences are very detrimental in uh, many of the areas either on a uh, say a watershed basis or river basins basis or state basis or even the country wise. So, according to United Nations uh, estimates uh, we can see that about one third of world's population lives in areas with uh, water shortages. So, that means you can see that in, in many parts of India then uh, China, Africa, so many and the South America many locations so water stress areas are there and even 1.1 billion um, uh, people lacks access to safe drinking water and then uh, say almost about 970 million square kilometer area is uh, say water stressed area. Uh, so, that way the, the say on an annual basis we can see that uh, about uh, uh, 60 billion people are affected uh, say uh, annually due to the droughts and there is a uh, gross domestic product loss of uh, annually about 110 uh, billion US dollars. So, that way this drought is a major disaster. So, you can see that um, uh, now uh, many developed countries like uh, uh, United States and European countries have done uh, uh, many, many measures to, to combat with uh, uh, the droughts and uh, developing countries like India, China and then uh, many of the South Africa and many African countries are also now looking to various um, say interventions to deal with the either short term droughts or uh, long term uh, droughts. So, now let us see what are the major impacts of these droughts. So, when we look into the impacts of droughts say most of the time uh, we wish it is always better to critically analyze it by uh, preparing the contingency plans. So, we have to analyze what are the, the causes of droughts and then what kind of measures can be implemented so that the, the effects of droughts, uh, impacts of droughts can be uh, reduced. So, that way it is always better to prepare a drought contingency plan. So, it is a, a document that identify specific actions that can be taken 
say before droughts, during the droughts and after a drought to mitigate some of the impacts and conflicts that results. So, you can see that um, as we discussed the uh, impacts are there on the economy, then agriculture, then uh, the, the, the total ecological system. So, that way when we, when we prepare a contingency plans, we should have contingency plans to deal uh, say before the drought situation can take place or during the drought and after the drought. So, after the drought what kind of measures to, to regenerate back the system. So, that way uh, we have to see. So, as I mentioned drought impacts say uh, drought impacts a specific effect of droughts. So, uh, there can be various types of impacts like uh, economical impact, environmental impact, the impact on the human settlement. So, people also uh, tend to refer to impacts as consequences or outcomes. So, that is say when we say drought impact it can be also sometimes we can call it drought consequences or the outcome of the droughts. So, impacts are uh, sy uh, symptoms of vulnerability. So, uh, as we discussed, so we, we can identify the, the uh, vulnerable areas due to the droughts and then based upon that we can have drought impacts, uh, we can assess the drought impacts. So, drought impact assessment uh, is the process of looking at the magnitude and the distribution of uh, droughts effects. So, how much intensity, how much is the magnitude say uh, uh, when we look into the drought and then um, uh, what will be the effects of that magnitude uh, say it is whether it is um, uh, very uh, strong type of drought or the moderate or the, the, the say uh, what, what type of drought accordingly uh, we, we can see that um, the, the impacts and then uh, uh, its effects can be also uh, analyzed. And then uh, the next question is how, what are the mitigation plans? So, when we look into drought mitigation, so we can have short term, short and long term actions, programs or policies uh, that can be implemented in advance of droughts or in uh, its early stages to reduce degree of uh, risk to people property and productive uh, capacity. So, uh, do with the uh, various um, climatic conditions we can predict in advance whether the possibility of drought is there or even some areas are always drought prone areas say, and uh, say uh, that kind of areas we can take uh, uh, earlier measures to, to combat this kinds of droughts. And then uh, say for example, wherever uh, say arid or semi arid regions, we can implement uh, say schemes like water harvesting schemes or total watershed management plans. So, that uh, say that itself will serve as a mitigation plans and then uh, uh, so that uh, we can try to protect the people, property and then the productive uh, capacity of that particular uh, watershed. So, that way on a watershed basis uh, we can uh, think about the drought uh, assessments, drought impacts and then uh, drought mitigations uh, plans. So, now uh, let us look into in details uh, what are the consequences of droughts. So, here I have listed uh, various consequences. So, as I mentioned earlier, there are significant consequences on environment. So, environmental consequences, consequences on agriculture, then the health and economic uh, consequences and the social consequences. So, that way we can classify the drought consequences uh, into environmental, agricultural, health, and health, economic and social consequences. So, uh, say some of the important um, uh, consequences I have listed here. So, say, say for example, agriculture is concerned. So, consequences like um, say when the water availability is reduced, so the, the, uh, the crops uh, production, the crops yield will be reduced or even the crops uh, itself will be affected so that um, say there is possibility of famine. So, diminished crop growth. So, when the water stress takes place due to the, the less availability of water, so the diminished crop growth or yield productions and then uh, carrying capacity of the livestock like uh, either um, uh, say um, flora and fauna the carrying capacity will be reduced. And then um, environment is concerned say, say some portion of the region become say dust bowls. So, the, the, the sand storms will be taking place. So, like dust storms can take place. Then due to the agriculture, agricultural problems related problems there can be famine. So, there is when the production is uh, reduced and then famine possibilities are there. And then uh, uh, say if an area becomes uh, uh, say, uh, say drought prone then habitat damage will take place since um, water will be reduced and then there will be related issues. Then uh, as far as the health of the people is concerned 
malnutrition since due to lack of availability of food and water, uh, good quality water, then dehydration and related diseases. So, especially in African uh, regions, many countries like uh, Chad, uh, uh, then um, uh, say um, uh, uh, Ethiopia and all these regions, we can see these kinds of issues, health related issues like malnutrition, dehydration and related diseases. And then uh, the people migrated from one country to another country or one area to another area. So, mass migration will be the outcome of this. And then um, uh, say the areas wherever uh, the, the, the electricity production is power production is from hydroelectric power plants, there is possibility of reduced electricity production, then sufficient water will not be available. Then shortage of water for industries, so industrial uh, say yield will be reduced, industrial uh, output will be reduced and then even there will not be water for uh, sufficient water for domestic supply. And then all these re related issues can create a social unrest between the communities and then uh, even there can be wars between the countries or between the states or between the regions and then uh, also when the temperature rises, I mean there is no sufficient rainfall for long say many seasons or many years, there is possibility of existing um, forests will be affected due to uh, wildfires. So, that way we can see the consequences are too much as far as droughts are concerned and it is too intense and then when we discuss about the watershed management plans especially, uh, we have to assess whether the concerned watershed is drought prone and then we have to see that what kind of measures can be adopted to reduce the, the droughts problem or to mitigate the drought related problems. So, now let us uh, look into some of the issues like uh, the risk and vulnerability related to the droughts. So, uh, when we discuss about the risk and vulnerability, so risk is the, the potential adverse uh, effects uh, like a product of uh, both the frequency and severity of the hazards and corresponding vulnerability. So, this is the definition of risk. So, in say uh, the area is concerned we have to go for risk analysis. So, based upon uh, the potential adverse effects and then risk analysis is the process of identifying and understanding the components associated with a drought uh, risk and evaluation of alternative strategies. So, we can assess the what will be the risk related to the droughts say for the particular area or particular watershed and then uh, uh, we can look into alternative strategies based upon the vulnerability analysis or risk analysis. So, then uh, the term like risk management, so risk management is opposite of crisis management, a proactive approach actually we are looking for uh, risk, uh, risk management. So, crisis management is once, once the, the situation become worse or the, situ the, the things happen, then we have to see how to deal that is crisis management. But risk management if this particular area is say prone to risk, so then uh, we can have advanced measures like in advance of drought mitigation can reduce drought impacts and then we can have a relief and recovery decisions made timely in a coordinated and effective manner. So, that way uh, uh, we can go for risk management and then when we look into vulnerability, uh, so vulnerability uh, indicates the characteristics, activities or environments uh, that makes them susceptible to uh, effects of droughts. So, when we say about the, the drought vulnerability means, so these are the characteristics or activities uh, that make them susceptible to effects of droughts. So, we can um, say calculate the degree of vulnerability. So, for the particular area depending upon uh, various conditions. So, this degree of vulnerability depends on environmental and social characteristics of the region and is measured by ability to anticipate uh, cope up with uh, resist and recover from uh, drought. So, when we discuss about the degree of vulnerability, we have to see that with respect to the environment related issues or social characteristics of that particular region or particular uh, location, uh, we, we have to see that how we can uh, say anticipate the issues and then how we can cope up with this the drought situations or how we can resist with respect to the, the situation arised from the droughts or we can once the drought occurs then how we can recover from the uh, droughts. So, these kinds of um, questions to be answered. So, this uh, is possible uh, through risk analysis and vulnerability analysis uh, related to the, the droughts. 
So, now uh, let us uh, look uh, briefly into say the how the, the, the which are the locations mainly drought prone or drought uh, generally occurs. So, as I mentioned droughts can be either short term or long term. Uh, so, um, the droughts when we look into the, the, the say the, the drought situation in at various parts of the world. So, droughts normal uh, is it is a uh, recurring feature of the climate in most parts of the world. So, especially in many of the African countries. So, this um, uh, droughts say, uh, uh, say uh, 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 the occurs say it is normally it is a recurring uh, feature. And then uh, so, this is actually the drought is actually one of the earliest documented climate event. So, you can see that uh, in many of the, the epics test books or the Bible or the, the, the uh, Hindu test books or uh, all these uh, say epics test books we can see that these droughts uh, have been mentioned. And then uh, uh, say uh, uh, the recurrent droughts as I mentioned um, uh, we can see many parts of Africa like uh, countries like Sudan. Chad, Ethiopia, East Africa, etc. Uh, there are many countries where uh, say year after year the droughts are there. So, decades of droughts in some of the locations, some of the countries. And in especially in Asian countries like uh, Himalayan basins, say, uh, say in a monsoon season, say 3 4 months, there will be severe floods, and that will be followed by drought conditions since uh, immediately the, the the once the um, say rainfall occurs, all the water will be drained uh, say due to the topographical nature of the region and then uh, next few months there is say positivity of droughts. So, these droughts are actually short term droughts, uh, but in a country like India, Rajasthan where arid regions or semi arid regions we can see that um, this uh, these areas are very much drought prone since generally in this region say uh, the available rainfall is very very less even some regions just 20 centimeter uh, average annual rainfall. Uh, in, in states like uh, Rajasthan. And then uh, uh, Gulf countries, some parts of China and then America say especially west coast of USA and then Amazon basins uh, say for example, there were some drought in 2005 uh, and then uh, uh, say largest part of Australia, these are these areas are uh, arid or semi arid uh, region. So, where the normally the rainfall conditions are less. And then uh, say the the uh, below average rainfall takes place for a number of years. Then this area become very much drought prone, and then related issues will be there. And then uh, uh, as far as now we can see that um, in the the last few years uh, we are discussing about the uh, climate change and the, its uh, effects. So. Um, we can see that um, due to the climate change impacts say more areas will be affected uh, by droughts and then the droughts become uh, frequent frequently droughts may take place. So, the, the climate ch change impact assessment shows that um, whenever say due to the climate change say the, the, the possibilities are that uh, the, the, uh, rain, the short the rainfall may increase many locations, but that rainfall will be short term and then um, uh, the, the due to the increase in uh, the evaporation and various climatic conditions, the, the frequency of uh, droughts will be uh, increased. So, these are some of the, the recent uh, assessment which we can see in the uh, literature. So, now uh, let us uh, look into uh, various causes of droughts. So, we were discussing about the consequences of dr uh, droughts, occurrence of droughts. So, now let us look into what are the important causes of droughts. So, as I mentioned earlier, say the mainly the important cause is that the, the, the um, below average rainfall in the region. So, main impact is the main cause is the rainfall effects. Uh, so, the ch so, this rainfall say wherever average annual possible rainfall conditions are not taking place say 25 percent less or 50 percent less like that. So, that uh, locations uh, become drought prone depending upon the other conditions also. So, rainfall effects can be changes in normal pattern. So, the just like reduction in presence of water vapor and its upward uh, movements. So, uh, say sufficient water vapor should be there and that should be upward movement should be there that way only rainfall takes place and if it does not take place then uh, uh, rainfall will be affected and uh, above average prevalence of high pressure systems. Uh, then uh, winds carrying uh, continental rather than oceanic uh, air masses. So, oceanic air masses means there will be um, uh, say more vapor in the, the, the um, uh, uh, air masses, uh, but if it is coming from um, say continental then there will be less uh, uh, say um, uh, 
the vapor. Uh, so, that way uh, the, the positivity rainfall will be reduced and then ridges of uh, high pressure areas. So, th so, that way the main cause is uh, say less rainfall taking place. So, that way these are some of the causes of this uh, the rainfall effects. Then uh, conditions like oceanic and atmospheric weather cycles. So, like um, uh, say El Nino, South, South, Southern Oscillation, Enso or Lani, El Nino that kind of phenomena like make uh, droughts a regular re recurring features of the of the various continents like Americas along the Midwest and Australia. So, uh, this can be also not only the rainfall effects, but rainfall is the main, main um, uh, cause, uh, but uh, the rainfall will be reduced or the, the, the uh, monsoon will be affected due to oceanic and uh, atmospheric uh, weather cycles. And then also uh, like um, other than the natural causes like human activities um, also can cause uh, this, uh, uh, this type of drought situations. So, human activities like uh, deforestation, over farming, excessive irrigation, um, soil erosion, then um, uh, urbanization etcetera uh, trigger droughts. So, that is uh, we, we have a large number of examples uh, so of these kinds of uh, uh, problems like um, uh, in, say for example, in India and in some Gujarat Kutch region and uh, Rajasthan regions say uh, wherever uh, say uh, like um, deforestation, over farming all those t things taken place say on a long period then we can see that um, the, the all the, the adverse effects takes place and that one of the effect is the the possibility of droughts. Then um, uh, say as we already discussed the climate change effects like greenhouse uh, gases increase in greenhouse gases then climate change effects and global warming are also uh, the causes of droughts. So, generally we can say that uh, the all the effects will be the environmental degradation. So, this environmental degradation leads to the, the short term or long term droughts uh, when we critically analyze the drought situation in many of the uh, locations uh, all over the world. So, now uh, say uh, with this background now let us look into the, the classification of droughts. So, we can classify the droughts into four categories uh, depending upon the, the, the nature or the what is the, the after effects of the, of the drought. So, we can classify the droughts into meteorological droughts, uh, hydrological droughts, uh, agricultural droughts and socio-economic droughts. So, meteorological droughts actually defined by climatic variables say like a precipitation, uh, uh, humidity or evaporation and the duration of the dry period. So, this is actually meteorological drought is uh, defined by this climatic variables. Then hydrological drought means it is associated with uh, effects on surface or subsurface uh, water supplies. So, like stream flow, reservoir, uh, lake levels and ground water. So, even though rainfall takes place due to various reasons, if the availability of surface water or ground water is uh, reduced, then uh, there is possibility of hydrological uh, droughts. Then the third category is agricultural droughts. So, this uh, links uh, impacts of uh, meteorological drought to agriculture uh, like uh, focusing on precipitation shortages, then differences between actual and potentially evapotranspiration, soil water deficits crop failure uh, etcetera. So, this is the actually the outcome with respect to the uh, meteorological droughts and then uh, socio-economic droughts actually this occurs when the demand for an economic good exceeds um, supply as a result of a weather related uh, shortfall uh, in water supply. So, when water is not available, so the impacts related to social or economical say related issues. So, that generally we call it as uh, socio uh, economic drought. So, now let us uh, look into all these uh, classifications uh, into details. Uh, so, first one is the, the meteorological droughts. So, meteorological droughts, uh, so uh, as we discussed uh, say whenever prolonged period uh, with uh, less than average precipitation takes place, then we can say that meteorological droughts takes place. So, this we can classify uh, into three categories say, uh, say when the, 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 uh, the average the, the rainfall in a particular location is uh, say 25 percent decrease is there with respect to the normal uh, uh, that is one category 
so that is maybe uh, we can say mild uh, type uh, droughts or say when the uh, rainfall is or the precipitation is um, say 50 percent decrease with respect to normal then um, we can say moderate and when the rainfall is say uh, to 75 percent decrease with respect to the normal condition, then we will say severe uh, drought conditions. So, that way uh, see we can define uh, the, the drought situation on the basis of uh, degree of dryness. So, in comparison to some normal or average amounts and the duration of the uh, dry spell. So, accordingly we can uh, uh, classify the uh, meteorological droughts. Uh, so, based on the degree of uh, dryness. Say, say for example, uh, say uh, according to the norms of Indian Meteorological Department IMD, so they have adopted the following criteria for sub classification of uh, meteorological droughts. So, uh, like um, total season rainfall is uh, less than 75 percent of normal value uh, affected uh, by droughts, then moderate drought is if seasonal deficiency is between uh, 26 to uh, 50 percent. Uh, then uh, say the, the third category is say, uh, like, uh, say compared to this um, say earlier first one is 75 percent then 26 to 50 percent and then uh, less than 26 or up to 25 percent. So, that way uh, mild, moderate or severe drought conditions so that way we can uh, classify. So, this uh, meteorological droughts when we look say uh, the we can also uh, see with respect to the probability of uh, drought occurrence. So, if you define the probability of drought occurrence say if it is uh, say in a particular area and uh, the area is said to be drought prone if it the probability is between 0.2 to 0.4 and uh, we say that um, uh, that area is chronically drought prone area when the probability exceeds uh, 0.4 and uh, say. Uh, um, uh, uh, say for example, say, say depending upon uh, this uh, whether it is simply drought prone area or chronically drought prone area, uh, we can classify the area and then see with respect to uh, various conditions or with respect to the probability of the uh, drought occurrence. So, say for example, in India uh, about 33 percent or one third of the, the total geographical uh, area comes under uh, drought prone area. So, uh, say some areas like uh, Rajasthan, um, um, say Gujarat Kutch region, these regions are uh, chronic uh, drought prone area and some areas are uh, say depending upon the weather conditions or various conditions uh, say uh, some part of Maharashtra, uh, uh, Bihar or Madhya Pradesh are uh, say simply drought prone area. So, then uh, this meteorological drought depends on the onset breaks and withdrawal times of monsoon say for example, if we consider the monsoon condition in a country like India. So, uh, this um, uh, meteorological drought will say that uh, say, say what time the monsoon starts the onset of monsoon and whether the monsoon is continuously proceeding to the various locations of the country or whether it breaks or say what time it will be withdrawing uh, the withdrawal times of the monsoons. So, accordingly, uh, we can say that whether a meteorological drought take, takes place or not. So, actually Indian meteorology department generally predicts the, 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 uh, the rainfall conditions say uh, before say one month uh, before the monsoon and then uh, that they, they assess the, the, the drought situation uh, with respect to various data at various location of the country. Uh, so, then the prediction of occurrence of drought is related to forecast of deficient monsoon season and its distribution. So, in India this is done by Indian meteorological uh, department. So, then uh, say as I mentioned the meteorological drought when we consider say severe drought if deficiency is above 50 percent of the, the normal value and then uh, say we, we say that a drought year is there when the area affected by moderate or severe drought uh, either individually or collectively is more than 20 percent of the total area of the country. Uh, so, say a country like India when we say that uh, this is a drought year say for example, uh, 2000 uh, um, 2, 3 or 2009 say uh, some of the uh, drought uh, years. So, we say that um, more than 20 percent of the total area of the country is affected by uh, moderate or severe droughts. Uh, say uh, if we look into the, the, the literature, we can see that say for example, in India if we consider the, the data for uh, between 1875 to 1991 
uh, about totally 23 drought years were there and uh, say for example 1918 being the worst um, year of the drought say 70 percent of the area of the country was affected in 1918. And then uh, uh, say this drought when we when we talk is um, say uh, two con concurrent or consecutive years drought years then it is becoming a severe problem. So, say for example, in India 1904 and 1905 two years were drought periods and then 1965 and 66 uh, were drought uh, years. So, actually even though this uh, occurs rarely, but if it happens then the condition becomes uh, very bad. Uh, as far as the, the, the economical situation and various other conditions as far as the drought impacts are uh, concerned. So, now next category is the, the hydrological droughts. So, hydrological droughts actually um, 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 brought about when the water reserves available in sources such as uh, aquifers, lakes and reservoirs fall below the uh, statistical average. So, we can have a statistical average like uh, if you consider reservoir, groundwater aquifer systems uh, like that. So, um, we say that there is a hydrological drought uh, when the, the water levels in this uh, uh, st storage systems goes uh, fall below the statistical average. So, this can be due to various reasons as I mentioned uh, say uh, in Kongan region in Maharashtra. So, even though um, severe rain, uh, heavy rainfall takes place during the monsoon season, but um, immediately after the rainfall this all the water will be drained due to the topography of the region. So, then there is uh, say hydrological drought will be there next um, say 6 months like that. So, uh, this hydrological drought uh, uh, means below average values of stream flow, uh, then um, contents in tanks, ponds and reservoirs, groundwater and soil moisture. So, all this will be uh, less than the average values or minimal uh, mini, mi, mi, say uh, mean values. So, that way when we look into hydrological droughts we can um, say, say four components of hydrological droughts we can see there are four components of hydrological droughts like uh, what is the magnitude. So, say how much is the uh, deficiency with respect to the, the, the statistical average in the reservoirs or other, other uh, uh, storage systems. Then uh, uh, how much duration whether it is say 6 months, 3 months like that and then what is the severity say like cumulative uh, amount of deficiency, how much is the deficiency taking place. So, and then uh, what is the frequency of occurrence, so whether it occurs uh, say every year or um, once in 10, 10 years like that. So, that way uh, we can uh, uh, say, uh, uh, say ascertain the hydrological uh, droughts. So, this hydrological, hydrological droughts that way we can classify into surface water deficit and groundwater deficit. So, surface water aspects when we look into with respect to hydrological droughts. So, the surface water aspects of drought studies related to stream flow and um, following uh, techniques are commonly adopted like um, uh, say whether the through the river or to the reservoir or in the pond what is the level of water. So, like low flow duration curves or low flow frequency analysis or stream flow modeling. So, all this indicates the surface water aspects. So, so the importance of this surface water assessment or aspect is say uh, when we look into design and operation of reservoirs we have to see uh, the possibility of this type of hydrological droughts. Then diversion of streams for irrigation say when we are diverting the water from one uh, river basin to another river basin or one uh, watershed to another watershed we have to see and then uh, power whether the electric power is produced from uh, hydro power then we have to see it is uh, related issues and then availability of drinking water and then water quality. So, when the level in the, uh, the rivers or the water level goes down or the reservoir levels goes down then we can see the water quality will be affected. So, all these issues we have to see with respect to the surface water aspects and uh, with respect to the ground water aspects um, we have to see the quantity the, the water level going down in the aquifer system. So, that the, the wells become dry and then also the, the quality of the water will be uh, also affected uh, with respect to the uh, ground water aspects. So, these are the issues related to the hydrological uh, droughts. So, now the third cl classification is the agricultural droughts. So, droughts that affect uh, crop production or the ecology of the, of the range. So, that is so called agricultural droughts. 
So, the principal criteria is the deficiency of rainfall or deficiency of the soil moisture, uh, so that the crops cannot uh, grow uh, properly and then yield will be reduced or the crop will be died. Uh, so, a variety of definitions for drought studies at plant level we can put like a root level or regional level or the, the with respect to soil moisture condition level or the, the uh, evaporation level like that. So, not only regional specific, but also crop and soil specific and this considers uh, crop growth and uh, water requirement. So, uh, say for example, in India when we look into the kharif crop or the rabi crop, say kharif crop is during the monsoon time and rabi is after the monsoon time. So, now especially in the rabi season, uh, say, uh, the, say we, it, when the crops mainly depends upon the soil moisture available and then if there is no irrigation, then we have to see uh, say how much water is available and then uh, with respect to the soil moisture available, how the crop growth is affected. So, this is with respect to time scale uh, for water efficiency in agricultural drought. Um, so, this may be for shorter uh, periods and uh, compared to the hydrological or uh, meteorological uh, drought studies. So, when we look into the, the agricultural droughts, uh, we can um, derive an index called uh, aridity index. So, actually this aridity index is a numerical indicator of the degree of dryness of the climate at a given location. So, the aridity indica index indicates how, how severe is the agricultural drought. Uh, so, um, there are number of definitions available for aridity index. One of the commonly used uh, um, uh, definition is say uh, uh, aridity index is equal to potential evapotranspiration minus actual evapotranspiration divided by uh, potential evapotranspiration multiplied by 100. Uh, so, the aridity index we can calculate either on a weekly basis uh, or say uh, uh, once in two weeks like that uh, and it is an indication of possible moisture stress experienced by the crops. Uh, so, we have to calculate the, the potential evapotranspiration uh, by uh, equipments like uh, lysimeter in particular region and then based upon that um, uh, these calculations we can find the aridity index. So, aridity index anomaly actually it shows the departure of aridity index from its corresponding normal value represents the uh, moisture shortage. So, the, when the moisture shortage is taking place then the crop uh, will be affected, the crop will be water stress and then the crop yield will be uh, affected. So, accordingly this um, aridity index say uh, with respect to the aridity index we can say that when it is varying from 1 to 25 uh, we can say it is mild arid uh, then uh, 26 to 50 we can say it is moderate arid and then uh, when it is greater than 50 we can say it is uh, severe uh, arid. So, and then some index, some other indexes like um, Palmer index say which shows uh, uh, monthly moisture conditions and how it is departing from normal or um, uh, uh, conditions. It is actually a short term drought and uh, wetness and then moisture availability index. Uh, so, these are all used to identify whether the particular area is uh, say that area agriculture drought is there uh, and then accordingly uh, say whether it is short term or long term uh, we have to go for uh, various mitigation uh, measures. Say for example, Indian Meteorological Department IMD produces aridity index anomaly maps of India on a weekly basis based on uh, data from 169 stations uh, spread over the country. Uh, so, 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 say these um, stations are uh, uh, in various agroclimatic zones and then this aridity index will give an indication uh, say how the crops will be affected, whether the crops are water stressed and then whether corresponding agricultural droughts possibilities are uh, there or not. So, that way this um, aridity index are useful in planning and management of uh, agriculture operations. And uh, recently now we can use um, remote sensing techniques also to identify whether there is agricultural droughts or um, whether the area is arid. Uh, say through the when the, with the remotely sensed data we can uh, say it can be either microwave or specific type of um, uh, say uh, remote sensing data. Uh, so, that uh, shows the, the soil moisture variation uh, in the soil. Uh, so, this can be used for monitoring uh, the agricultural uh, droughts. So, this is about the agricultural droughts. So, now let us look into the 
socio economic droughts actually socio economic drought is is a not a real classification drought but what will be the impacts with respect to the the either meteorological droughts or the the hydrological droughts or the uh, the agricultural drought so what will be the the effect on the the so what will be the social effects or the economical effects so that is we we are trying to indicate um, by socio economic droughts so socio economic drought um, uh, are associated uh, so it is associated with the supply and demand of some economic uh, goods with the uh, elements of meteorological hydrological and agricultural droughts so with respect to the this um, uh, meteorological ag hydrological or agricultural droughts um, uh, we are coming um, uh, with uh, uh, the conditions of socio economic droughts so the socio economic uh, droughts occur say occurrence depends on the time and space um, a process of supply and demand to identify or uh, the classify or classify the uh, droughts so um, what time the droughts takes place or how much uh, time it takes place and what location so accordingly the socio economic droughts um, uh, occurrence will be there so um, water forage food grains fish and hydrolytic power so all these uh, same depends upon weather and then uh, co correspondingly the variations uh, say the this the economical uh, say the uh, activities will be depending upon that so that way when the water availability is uh, say reduced due to the droughts so then economical impacts will be there so then corresponding economic droughts and then corresponding social effects will be there that is the social and uh, economic drought so the demand for an economic good exceeds supply as a result of a uh, weather related shortfall in water supply uh, then we say that uh, there is occurrence of uh, socio economic uh, drought uh, so that way um, say uh, the the say we have to assess with respect to the the drought situation uh, how the 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 economical impacts will be there and then what are the social impacts and then uh, corresponding consequences we have to analyze and then uh, we have to uh, see the 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 remediation or mitigation uh, measures so that way when we look into the socio economic droughts the consequences are reducing hydrologic power production uh, required uh, the government to convert to more expensive imported uh, petroleum and uh, uh, stringent energy conservation measures to meet the power needs say for example if it is the the uh, the, the area the location the power production is through hydrologic power plants then a demand for economic uh, uh, goods increases when population or per capita consumption uh, increases uh, say uh, th that can be another consequences then uh, increase in supply by adopting efficient technologies for production construction or uh, um, uh, construction of reservoirs we can uh, reduce the impacts then the relative rate of change like a critical factor if both are increasing uh, say uh, is demand increasing more rapidly than supply then uh, we can uh, see the relative rate of change how it is taking place then above criterion for future predictions or depending upon the the consequences or the um, the demand for economic goods so accordingly uh, say we can uh, assess the the socio economical impacts and corresponding socio economic drought situation for the particular uh, watershed or particular region so now uh, say we have seen the classifications with respect to droughts so now let us look what are the impacts and then the vulnerabilities so uh, we, we discussed this aspect earlier also we defined the the uh, the risk and vulnerability so the drought risk is based on a, a combination of frequency severity and the spatial extent of droughts uh, so as a physical nature of droughts and a degree of to which a population or activity is vulnerable to the uh, effects of droughts so as we discussed so this is a combination of say frequency severity and spatial, spatial extent then degree of regions vulnerability depends on the environmental and social uh, characteristics of the region so what are the environmental effects say what are the social effects so accordingly uh, we have to define the degree of the the degree of vulnerability of that particular region so uh, we have to investigate the drought vulnerability so first we can identify the relevant drought impacts and the trends over time and then uh, we can rank significant drought impacts with respect to the conditions and then we can investigate the underlying causes of uh, drought impacts so that way uh, we can have uh, we can investigate the drought situation 
and then we can come up with uh, say vulnerabilities and then uh, even we can produce a vulnerability uh, maps. So, uh, so, when we discuss the drought vulnerability, so the, we have to identify the rele relevant drought impacts and trends. So, like impacts are often uh, 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 symptoms of uh, other underlying problems like vulnerabilities. So, for example, drought impact uh, reporter developed by United States of America. So, this drought impact uh, reporter shows how the system, uh, how whether particular area is uh, vulnerable or not. Then uh, we can have a ranking, so ranking drought impacts, so like ranking based upon the cause, aerial extent, trends over time, public opinion, fairness and ability of aff affected area to recover. So, according to various uh, parameters, uh, we can produce a ranking and this ranking ensure equitable policy formulation, so like uh, say uh, economical um, helps or economic fund of say particular funding for particular region. So, we can have this kinds of ranking and so that we can have equitable policy formulation that helps uh, say for public and community advisory committees and groups uh, so of, of relevant scientists and policy makers. So, this kinds of uh, ranking of drought impact is very important. So, for example, drought impact ranking metrics we can have uh, at the state or community level business or individual. Uh, scale and uh, that from that we can uh, easily identify what will be the possibility of the particular area aff affected to be affected by the, the drought and what is that rank. So, then accordingly the, the various economic various, mit various mitigation measures or e economical measures uh, we can go for. So, when we discuss about drought vulnerability analysis, so we, we have to investigate the underlying causes of drought impacts as we already discussed. So, drought vulnerability analysis provides a framework for identifying the social, economic and the environmental causes of drought impacts. So, these all these issues we have already discussed earlier. So, then um, we may have to give some direct uh, attention to underlying causes than to its results. So, what are the causes? So, according to the causes, say we have to go for the mitigations or the, the remediations. So, uh, first we have to identify the causes. Uh, than only to the results. So, that causes say for example, if we can go for uh, say water conservation or in water harvesting or build a dam. So, what kind of direct attention is needed? So, once drought, uh, drought uh, risk assess is assessed, action to mitigate the drought impacts we can look. Say for example, reduced crop yield lead to lack of precipitation. So, then the results of vulnerability analysis, the farmers did not use drought resistant seeds because they did not believe them to be useful or costs were too high or because of some commitment to cultural beliefs. So, we have to say what I am saying we have to identify the causes and then we have to see the, the, uh, the what is our vulnerability as far as the drought is concerned and then we have to come up with um, the mitigation uh, measures. So, that way the drought impact assessment is uh, very uh, important. So, based upon this drought impact assessment only we can generate the vulnerability maps. So, the impact assessment uh, examines the consequences of a given event or change. So, drought impact assessments uh, actually are useful identification of direct consequences and indirect consequences. As far as the drought is concerned there are certain direct consequences like directly the water will availability will be reduced and then um, agriculture will be will yield will be reduced and then indirect consequences will be the total ecological system will be affected. So, uh, the flora and fauna will be affected like that. So, direct consequences of the drought like reduced crop yield, livestock losses and the reservoir depletion. So, these are some of the uh, direct uh, consequences and then secondary consequences or the indirect consequences then corresponding social effects. So, the people will be affected, the society will be affected. Then uh, the initial assessment identify the drought impacts, but uh, does not identify the underlying reasons for these uh, impacts. So, we can have an initial assessment uh, as far as the, the drought situation is concerned and then we can go for a final assessment based upon the initial assessment by critically studying various aspects. Uh, so, that um, the drought impact can be properly uh, assessed. So, when we look into the drought impacts, so we have already discussed there are mainly three common types of impacts like first one is the economic impacts, second one is social impacts, third one is the environmental impacts. 
So, the economic impacts as we discussed can be agricultural, industrial, so tourism related, energy related, financial or transportation related. So, these are some of the important economic uh, impacts. Then so social impacts like um, the, uh, the social stress or the, the health of the people are affected, then uh, malnutrition, uh, then uh, there is no facility for recreation, uh, then public safety is affected, then uh, uh, the cultural and the aesthetic values are affected. So, these are some of the social impacts of the droughts. Uh, then we, when we look into environmental impacts like um, the flora and fauna are affected, the planet, the area is affected, ecosystem is affected, then if then wetland is affected, then surface water and groundwater qualities are affected, so like that. So, the number of environmental uh, impact uh, will impacts will be there. So, uh, say when we look into the, the uh, drought assessments, uh, we can produce uh, say various tables in tabular forms, various parameters and then we can come up with a checklist uh, whether the, the with respect to various condition, whether it is there are historical situation is there or current how it is or there is potential drought. So, that way uh, say a checklist selection can be based upon either a common or extreme droughts or combination of the two and then a historical droughts that identify the drought of, of record for uh, the area and to assess the impacts of that droughts. Then a current droughts like with the current knowledge um, that you have about your local area, if another droughts of, of record were to occur tomorrow or what the local uh, impacts may be and then record them on the checklist under the current column. Then potential droughts like uh, that speculates what the impacts of the same droughts would be for the area in 5 or 10 years time and then record this in the potential column. So, that way we can come up with a checklist uh, with respect to the drought when we look into the, uh, the drought impact assessments and then uh, with respect to the, the conditions like a severe, moderate or low impacts or we can put with a historical drought situation, current drought situation or the area is potential drought situation. So, that way uh, say for example, here uh, this uh, checklists are taken from Western Drought Coordination Council of United States. So, um, here uh, they have put uh, economic uh, assessments, so um, uh, the checklist for economic impacts. So, like loss from crop production, various columns are there, then loss from dairy and livestock production. Uh, so, the columns are given like uh, what is the historical situation, what is the current situation, then what is the potential drought situation. So, we can keep, we can give um, ranks for the each of these and then see uh, whether the, the area is uh, say uh, historically drought prone area or current drought is there or the area is uh, potentially drought prone. Then uh, say with respect to the, the uh, environment impacts. Uh, this is also taken from Western Drought um, Coordination Council uh, website. So, there environmental related issues like uh, damage to animal species, then damage to planet species and loss of wetlands, uh, wind and water erosion of soils. So, like that uh, here again we can have the checklist like uh, historical situation, current and potential. So, that way uh, we can put the, uh, the, uh, way the, the tick mark or checklist and then we can come up whether the area is how, how much drought prone and we can have the drought assessments. And then if you consider the social um, uh, uh, impacts are concerns, then the social impacts like mental and physical stress, then health related low flow problems, uh, reductions in nutrition, then loss of human life, then public safety from forest and um, range fires like that. So, this is a checklist for social impacts and uh, whether it is with respect to historical or current or potential what are the possibilities. So, this checklist shows how the system will be uh, behaving. So, that way we can have the checklist and then we can assess the drought. And as far as drought assessment is concerned say around the world various agencies uh, assess the drought situations not only drought other um, uh, natural hazards like uh, earthquake, tsunami and uh, other uh, flooding etcetera all these disasters, one, but uh, drought is also one of the disaster which uh, various agencies are monitoring like uh, national climatic uh, data center, then uh, uh, say uh, NCDC, uh, then international research institute for climate prediction, then center for international disaster information, then uh, relief where United Nations office for coordination of humanitarian affairs. The International Federation of Red Cross and 
uh, red crescent uh, societies. So, all these agencies with respect to various parameters, with respect to various checklists, they assess the various, uh, the various locations whether it is drought prone or um, how much severity can be uh, there with respect to drought. So, all these situations we, uh, and they, they will be assessed and they need to be put there in their websites and uh, from that also that their uh, websites we can identify a particular region or particular area is uh, drought prone and related drought assessment can be uh, done. So, um, we are discussing today the drought assessment and related issues. So, some of the important references uh, used for today's uh, lecture uh, are listed here. Then uh, before closing down few questions like um, uh, total question like a study critically the drought problems in India, analyze the causes of droughts uh, in India, then what are the consequences of these droughts, how the drought vulnerability can be assessed. So, these details you can get through from uh, various websites of Ministry of Water Resource, Environmental uh, Ministry, uh, like Agriculture Ministry like that. Then um, uh, say a few questions for self evaluation, what is drought and what are its impacts discuss the drought occurrences at different parts of the world, what are the major classifications of droughts, illustrate hydrological droughts and related issues, describe socio-economic droughts, discuss drought vulnerability analysis. Then uh, few assignment questions, what are the major consequences of droughts, what are the important uh, causes of droughts, discuss the meteorological drought and related issues, what is agricultural drought and how to classify it, what are the common types of uh, drought impacts. So, uh, say today we are discussing about the droughts and the its consequences and then the classification of droughts and then um, uh, how we can do the drought assessment.